Hello students and welcome to Economicspedia. I hope all of you are in a very good health. So, today in this session we will mainly be talking about a part from the public finance and the topic is public debt. So, in this session we will be focusing mainly on the basic definition of public debt and the reasons behind its creation and then further we will be moving towards the types of public debt and finally we will be signing off with the consequences and importance of the types of public debt. So let's begin without any further ado. Public debt. So this before this term we need to understand that from where this public debt is originating. It is mainly originating from the budget deficit condition of the economy. Budget deficit. So budget deficit is a condition when the government expenditure is much more than the government income. That is government's income is in the form of taxes. So when the expenditure is greater than income, okay, this is the condition when we have budget deficit. Now, this scenario that is the budget deficit can be fixed by the government in two forms. Number one is by taxation which has to be increased and number two is borrowing. Okay, that is the government can borrow the money from any sources. So these are the only two ways by which the budget deficit condition can be fixed. Now, the question arises that how the public debt is coming into the picture, we need to focus on that. Moving on, when the government borrows the money from any sources, then we have that, then we have a condition that the government is debted to someone. That condition is known as the public debt. So from the borrowing condition, when the government is borrowing from some source, then we can say that this is ultimately lead to public debt because this borrowing makes the government debted to someone. Okay, so as the government is being uh, the one who is debted. So that is why it is known as the public debt. Now the government can borrow from many sources. That means the government can borrow the money, the required sum of money that will be required to furnish the current government expenditure. So this can be uh, taken up from the normal citizens of the economy as well as from the abroad. Now from this perspective we can divide the public debt into two types. So the public debt is of two types. Number one, when the borrowing is taking place from the country only. That means the government is now borrowed to its own citizens. Then we have a situation of internal debt. Here the government is taking up the money from the citizens of the country only. And the second type of uh, public debt is number two. That is the situation when the government takes the money or borrows the money from foreign lenders. That condition is known as the external debt. External debt. So these are the two types of debt that the government is dealing with. Okay. Now the borrowing that the government is doing, it can be from many different uh, forms. Like there can be treasury bills, there can be uh, money stock market or uh, many other form of special loan and special bonds of the government. So. As we have just seen that there are two types of public debt, that is one is internal and one is external. So what are the main consequences? Let's 
have a light on that perspective. So let's begin with internal debt. Okay, so internal debt is a situation when the government is taking up the money or borrowing the money from the own country citizens. So here it has been mentioned by many of the economists that under this internal debt, there is no such burden on the future generation that in the otherwise other types of debt is, uh, debts may face. So here we can say that there is no burden on the future generation and this thing many economists have focused on. Why this is so? Because look at it in this way internal debt. So here the uh, government is borrowing from its own citizens. That means in other words we can say that the uh, citizens are debtor of each other. So they faces the debts to each other only. That means when the uh, debt is finally paid off it can be said that the there is a transfer of income from one group of individuals who are the taxpayers to the other group of individuals who are the bondholders okay so here it can be said that there is a mere redistribution of income takes place redistribution of income from one group of the individual who are the taxpayers to the other group of individuals who are the bondholders. So internal debt does not have any burden on the future generation. This has also been mentioned by A.P. Lerner in his uh, book and he has also mentioned that this internal uh, debt as free from the burden on the future generation. And Lerner has also mentioned that there is no such thing that the future generations are getting worse off because the consumption of the future generation remains the same that otherwise would have been. So the future generation are not getting affected under this internal debt. Now, interestingly, we can say that although it has been mentioned that there is no burden on the future generation, but we can say that there is a burden on the future generation in a very uh, similar way as to satisfying these theories. And the burden is nothing but a redistribution effect. That is here only. From here only we can say that there is a redistribution effect and this redistribution effect is again talks about the transfer of income from one hand of the individual to the other hand because ultimately what happens the future generation either either has two uh, options right the one option is that they can retire the debt or they can reiterate uh, or they can refinance the loan or debt so in either way the future generation is paying the debt from one source of one group of individual to the other group of individual. That is why it can be said that due to this redistribution effect, they, the future generation is facing a burden. But overall, if we, this is just another perspective of telling that actually there is no burden on the future generation. And AP Learner has also mentioned that the consumption of the future generation remains the same. So we can say that the future generations are not really worse off in any way. Okay, so this is the consequence of the internal debt on economy that it has no burden according, uh, but no burden on the future generation. Now let's see what it has to say about the external debt. Right. So external debt, this word itself is self-explanatory because external means from outside, right? So external debt is a situation as we have mentioned in the previous part of this video that external debt is a situation when the government is borrowing from abroad. 
in order to satisfy its current expenditure of many types. So that is the situation. Now, let's take up this external debt study in two parts. Number one, that suppose the outside uh, money that is being borrowed by the government is to satisfy the current consumption. Number one, the first part, let's say part one. So part one is borrowed to satisfy the current consumption. current consumption so this from this current consumption it is quite evident that this particular thing this particular form of borrow, borrowing by the government will ultimately lead to a burden for the future generation right how because the future generation will have to sacrifice a certain amount of their consumption and the amount of consumption that they has to sacrifice will be equal to the amount of loan that the government has taken plus the incurred interest that must be paid to the foreign lenders. So because of this we can say that the future generation has to let go. I am writing in short I hope you can figure it out. So the future generation has to let go consumption and the amount of it is equal to the loan amount plus the interest rate that has to be paid to the foreign lenders. So here this adds burden to the future generation okay so this is part one let's say for the part two okay now part one talked about a scenario where the borrowed amount was used to finance the current consumption Part 2 says, part 2 says that suppose the government is borrowing from the outside or from the foreign uh, or from the abroad. Okay, so this time the government is doing in order to increase the capital formation in the economy. Now it is doing to increase the capital formation okay so in this case we will be seeing that whether this ultimately leads to any burden on the future generation or not let's have a look so this is the scenario that now the government is taking up the money in order to finance the capital, in order to increase the capital formation, right? So here we have further two situations. Let's say for the part A, if the marginal return from the uh, capital, okay, before that, we need to see that this investment in the capital formation whether this will be productive or not will depend upon the project productivity. That means if the project is highly productive, so no matter how much money you are investing in that, you will ultimately get a output, positive output from there. And ultimately here as we are uh, investing in for the capital formation, so the capital formation will take place and ultimately that will be beneficial for the economy. However, if the... Um, Product, project productivity is not that good then we cannot expect that the capital formation will be positive and this will turn the tables around so whether this capital formation is taking place or not that is determined by the productivity of the project 
So we need to keep that in mind. Productivity of project. Okay. Now let's come to the part A where if we find that the marginal uh, return on this investment is greater than the marginal cost of fund from abroad. That is if the marginal return of the particular project and that I'm investing is greater than the marginal cost of fund and here the fund is from abroad. If this is the scenario then we can say that combined effect of the debt and the capital expenditure will ultimately make the future generation to better off. So here the future generation is better off. Let me write it here. Future generation is better off. And similarly, if we have the opposite situation, that means if the marginal return is less than the marginal cost, so the cost is higher than the return or the cost is higher than the benefit, we can say. In that scenario, obviously the future generation will be worse off. This is the only difference. And ultimately, this results in a burden on the future generation again. So, what is in a nutshell we can say? We find that for the internal debt, there is not any type of burden for the future generation. However, contrastingly, for the external debt, we find exactly the opposite results. That means, for the external debt, there will be, there will be debt for the future generation. No matter in what form or in what purpose we are using the uh, fund from the abroad. Here we have taken up for the two cases, that is one for the uh, financing the current consumption and the second one is that here for the capital formation. In both the cases we find that it ultimately leads for the future generation end up with a burden. So we can say that the external debt always have a burden. So we can say that the external debt always has a burden on the future generation. Okay, so this is all about the public debt, the basic introduction of public debt. What is it and how it is formed and its types and the consequences of the types. Well, I hope you have understood and if you have any kind of further doubt and queries related to this portion of the public finance or in the other for, or from the other portions, please don't hesitate to let us know below in the comment section. And thank you for watching this. See you in the next one.